I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're going to be talking about the dangers of stuffing it. Mar <laughs> Margaret's got a good... <laughs> it's not what you think. No. <laughs> Margaret's got a good research article today. Uh, but before we get into that, I just want to let you know that if you do want to get our help personally, it's very easy to do. You just go to my website, AskCraig.net. And at the top, you can click on coaching. You can either click on coaching with me or Margaret and in the near future, Victoria. But Margaret, what do you got today on stuffing it? <laughs> now people are, I don't, they're all, they're all like, what? What and, are we going to talk I, about, Margaret? I don't mean the turkey. <laughs> it refers to stuffing emotions okay. and holding them inside and not processing them and being afraid to communicate. Okay, but it's such a provocative title, I, I, I loved it. Um, we've heard about this gentleman before, his name is Alan Schwartz, and he's originally a social worker and then got a PhD. So, I also think he's been in the business for a long time, I think he's semi-retired too, so we might have been taught at the same time, no mm. wonder I like him. And it sounds like the Schwartz is with him. Yeah, the Schwartz, the Schwartz <laughs> is with him, yeah. Communicating with others makes us feel better emotionally and physically. If we stuff emotions and don't talk about them, it will affect us in every way. Mm -hmm. It can even affect our immune system, making us more vulnerable to cold viruses, he really means COVID of course, and other ills. Okay, so if we don't talk about how we feel, it can damage our immune system, and I think that's been pretty well um, proven by now. There are many families whose systematic way of functioning is not to talk about issues, mm -hmm. emotions, and opinions. In such families, when there is any sign of disagreement, everyone shuts down or stuffs it. Okay, I hear it It often. sounds like a board game. Yes, it does. Stuff let's play it. stuffs it. Yeah, let's. Well, let's play that, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and I hear the word shut down from so many people. Um, about men and women, but mostly about men. If I try to talk with him about anything, he shuts down, okay? Oh yeah, yeah. I hear it all right? the time. But he shuts down, right. All the time. So what is stuffing it, you ask? Stuffing has to do with keeping thoughts and feelings to oneself, so as not to hurt the feelings of other people in the family. Mm -hmm. In these stuffy families, which I just loved, conflict is labeled as dangerous and harmful. Mm -hmm. Emphasis and value is placed on silence about anything that might be deemed controversial. Each family member works hard to protect the feelings and well-being of the other members. However, this comes at a great cost to everyone in the group. Yeah, nobody's acting authentic. No, nobody's being authentic. And, well, I, something I'm going to say later. That, I didn't read the article. Okay. I guess I jumped ahead of you. Not really, not really. Oh, okay. In a self-help book entitled, I Don't Want to Talk About It, Terence Rial discusses what he refers to as the secret legacy of male depression. He's an up upcoming and now published relationship person in Boston, and he's doing very well. You're seeing his name on conference brochures now. He refers to as the secret legacy of male depression. Of course, the secret legacy refers to the main value of hiding feelings and appearing strong and masculine. And I think that is, I've had men say it to me recently, in fact. Well, I don't want to be like a girl. No, you may not, but you can still be masculine and still have feelings. And one guy, to one guy I said, you have a right to as many feelings as any woman. And he said, yeah, I do. Yes, you do. Of course, the secret legacy refers to the main value of hiding feelings and appearing strong and masculine. With verbal and emotional pathways of experience closed off to them, 
okay? So now you can think this. Think of these people who are stuffed with these outweighs, with these outlets shut off to them, closed off to them. Men may develop depression or addiction. Okay. I think a, a depression. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. We see that all the time. All the time. And I can remember being in private practice and some of these guys would come in looking so beaten down and so depressed. And they would say, I'm not depressed. And I would assume the same posture they had and say, neither am I. Okay, and they would inevitably laugh, which would get things off to an okay start. You know, I'm not depressed either. These stuffed feelings are shame, anger, rage, embarrassment, sadness, love and affection for their children. These are all much too vulnerable making, um, so we're going to avoid it. Yeah. Words are symbolic representations of how we feel, what we think, and what we are experiencing. Many great psychologists and psychiatrists have written about their observation that verbal communication is a way for people to mitigate the impact of the stressors to which life subjects all of us. The failure to communicate with loved ones and the need to avoid discussing anything emotional can lead to numerous emotional and somatic symptoms. Okay? I don't think people realize this. I don't think they do either. No, uh, because you know we've been part of the culture that does this, you know. Yeah. So it is important to understand that anger can be expressed without tempers flaring, and that's a very very important concept. Okay, it's important to understand that anger can be expressed without tempers flaring. Now, if you grew up in a family where somebody flew off the handle all of the time, it may be hard to believe that. Okay. Yeah. The purpose of words is to express feelings and thoughts in ways that are controlled but effective. The most effective way to express anger and disappointment is to lower your voice and to carefully explain the reason for the anger. I never heard that one before and it's a wonderful idea. If you have to say something angry, lower your voice because very many people came from families where people yelled. Yeah. Okay. Been there. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. It has often been said that what expressing anger and disappointment an individual should avoid using the pronoun you. You've heard that before. Yeah. You know, you did this and you did that. You've told us that before, Margaret. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> it carries with it a tone of accusation, which <clears throat> makes the other person <clears throat> defensive. It is better to use the pronoun I. Yeah. I feel sad when you do Then this. it just escalates. Yeah. Because people instinctually want to defend themselves. Instantly, you know? yeah, yeah. And I often have to say, you don't owe anybody any explanation for anything. Mm -hmm. You're a grown-up. You're not a child. Okay? The purpose of using the pronoun I while expressive feelings is to state one's own thoughts and feelings without accusing the other. For example, I may feel angry that my daughter broke her curfew mm -hmm. and came in late. I want to tell her that when she is late, I feel worried about her. Or if a husband or wife has spent too much money on clothing, you might say, I feel worried about money and I need your help in controlling the budget. Mm -hmm. Now, what wonderful ways to put things, right? That's not going to trigger anything. Yeah. Um, if, it's interesting how just making these minor changes can make a huge, huge difference. Huge difference, yes. That's why we tell you you got to really do the work to gain these skills. Because it's not easy to remember to do this when you're... No, it when feeling upset. No, it isn't. And here's the other one. Mm -hmm. If I said something like, you are always late, or you are a spendthrift, the groundwork would be laid for a gigantic quarrel, and no one would hear anything. Yeah. Okay. Th throwing that always or never in yeah. there. Get Yeah. No I, no, no you, <laughs> and no always or never. Mm. Okay. Our colleagues in family therapy also tell us that adjectives like always and never yeah. will not work and are usually not true. The kid doesn't come in late all the time, and she doesn't overspend all the time. Yep. It is essential for everyone to understand that there is nothing weak or helpless about discussing all types of feelings, from those that are painful and sad to those that are angry. Okay? We have a right to all of those feelings. We're born with the capacity to have them. Yeah. 
It is vitally important for children to be told by both of their parents that they are loved. One parent actually asked me if he loved his son and daughter too much. He feared that too much love would spoil them. And he's got, you know, many exclamation points with that. And I've How heard many that. times have you heard it? I've I heard, have it, heard yeah. it many times. Yeah. yeah. You're um, going to spoil them. How can love ruin, harm, or spoil anyone? Where the heck did this come from, Margaret? It's been the male legacy. You know, think about it. Uh, the Marlboro Man, um, when Westerns were very popular, like in the 1940s and so forth, um, most of the idols were the strong, silent type. I wish we'd never heard that term, okay? There are two mean things that women do to men. One is tell them not to have emotions, and the other one is that it's hard to cook, all right? How can love ruin or spoil anybody? You can't love too much. You can't pick babies up too much, okay? You cannot spoil an infant. No, you can't. I haven't said that in a while. No, nor can they manipulate. Because people say, well, they're just crying because they want to be picked up. Yes, they do. That's how they're wired. Go pick them up. How can love or harm or spoil anybody? In other words, it is not only anger, depression, and other negative feelings that many people have difficulty expressing. It is also for many people to express love, affection, and tenderness. It makes them feel too vulnerable. Families, couples, and individuals can all get help in learning to express emotions. There's family therapy, couples therapy, and individual therapy. There's all kinds of therapy mm -hmm. out there. There is a term called alexithymia, and we talked about it a long time ago. Yeah, we did. Alexithymia, spelled just like it sounds, means a person does not know what they are feeling, and I often hear that. Nor can they put words to it. Often there is trauma behind alexithymia, and I have certainly seen the same thing. When you get people who say they don't know how they feel, they don't know what they want, chances are there's trauma behind it. Okay, And I think trauma has something to do with the silence thing. Because if you grew up in a family where people went off at the slightest little provocation, and violence might have followed the verbal fight, you're going to do anything to keep the equilibrium so nobody gets out of control. Long-term individual therapy is used to help those folks, the ones with alexithymia, learn to express feelings and thoughts. Okay? Terry Rial, uh, who talks about the hidden legacy of depression and manliness, thinks everybody can learn and understand the power of words. Okay? I liked that article. It was good. There were some good reminders in there of topics we haven't talked about yes. in a while. And I want to reemphasize, you cannot spoil an infant. Or anyone. You know, people are worried that they're manipulated by a baby. Yeah. But a manipulation is because somebody can't ask for what they want. That's right. Right? Yeah. And so a baby can't ask for what they want. So that's not a manipulation. No. They're directly asking for it. Yeah. All they can do is cry and look cute. That's all they can do to get you to respond. And remember, they're totally helpless. But I heard that from somebody just the other day. Well, that baby is already manipulating its mother. No, it's not. And it was the worst advice parents ever got. Um, people my age will remember Dr. Spock, who told, who told everyone to let the baby cry it out. And then we'll wonder why the kid is depressed half their lives. Yeah. It's, uh, it's just absolutely crazy how that happens. Yeah. You know? All right. Yes, it, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Hopefully you found this one helpful. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. You can sign up for whichever one works for you. And of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you think that I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. And for God's sake, don't stuff it. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.